Hello everyone. In today's video, we will be learning and discussing the Ackermann profit classification of malocclusion. So we are aware that Edward H. Engel contributed a widely used classification of malocclusion, which describes the relation between the mesobuccal cusp of the maxillary first molar and the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar, and therefore he presented three classes of malocclusion, which represented a discrepancy only in the anterior posterior or sagittal dimension. Now the reason for its widespread use lies in its simplicity and the fact that it brought order to the previous chaos that existed in describing the dental relationships. Even this classification has earned some criticism because of the following reasons. Number one, the relationship between the teeth and the face is not described. Secondly, only the anterior posterior or sagittal deviation is taken into consideration because we know that dentition can be affected in all the three planes of space that is the transverse, vertical and sagittal. Third, the description of the dental relationship does not include a diagnosis because there is no differentiation between the dental or skeletal discrepancy and we also know for a fact that two patients with same dental relation may have different skeletal proportions therefore they require different treatment planning and fourth the complexity of the problem is not indicated so in order to enhance the angles classification ackerman and profit published an article titled the characteristic of malocclusion a modern approach to classification and diagnosis in year 1969 in which they described the malocclusion using five characteristics and their interrelationships using a venn diagram for the visual representation of the same so the five characteristics and the order are as follows. First is the alignment of the arches. Second is the facial profile. Third is the transverse relationship or the type. Fourth is the sagittal relationship also called the class. And fifth and final is the bite depth or the vertical relation. So the step one includes the description of the alignment of the arch. Now the alignment is described and viewed in form of a square outside the Venn diagram and any arch can be classified into an ideal form, crowded, spaced or a mutilated arch form. Now second step involves the description of the profile of the patient. We have to first describe the divergence. There can be an anterior divergence if the mandible is forwardly placed or there can be a posterior divergence if the mandible is retruded. Now also the lips of the patient are also described. The lips can be convex, straight or concave. Now it is essential to describe both of them because the divergence, it depicts the underlying facial skeletal relationship. By the lip position, it depicts and represents the underlying teeth inclinations. Now third is the description of the type or the transverse relationship in the lateral dimensions. Now the arch can have a unilateral or bilateral a buccal or a palatal crossbite which might have an underlying skeletal or a dental discrepancy. Now the fourth step involves describing the sagittal relation or the anterior posterior relationship in the sagittal dimension and they and the term class is used for the same. Now it can be very simply classified using the angles classification into class 1, 2 or 3. In the step 5 the vertical dimension also termed as the bite depth is described. The dentition can have an open bite, deep bite, which may be anterior or posterior or which may have a dental or skeletal underlying component. So if you look closely at the Venn diagram, apart from these three, of, three planes of space, there is also overlap that is taking place. Now these describe the next four groups. For example, the overlap between the transverse and sagittal plane describe the group 6. The group 7 is because of the overlap between the sagittal and vertical plane and group 8 is because there is overlap between the vertical as well as transverse discrepancy while the group 9 is the one which describes the discrepancy in all the three planes of space. So how does this classification actually work? So if we follow the aforementioned steps, we will be able to define the 9 groups of malocclusion and the complexity and severity of each case increases with the group number. Therefore, group 9 is the most complex case as there is problem in the alignment, there is problem in the profile, there is the problem in lateral, sagittal as well as vertical relationships. So given on your screens are the five characters that are described earlier. Now let's take an example so we can understand the classification better. So given is the case of a subject with crowded arches, a convex profile with posterior divergence, 
posterior cross bite bilaterally with angles cast to relation but the bite depth or the overbite is normal now let's classify this case based on ackerman profits classification so first step is the alignment so in this case we can see that the arches are crowded therefore there is problem in the alignment therefore it classifies in group 1 now second profile the profile 2 is affected because it is convex and it has a posterior divergence which might have a underlying skeletal or dental factor that we are not sure but it classifies in group 2 also now step 3 is the type or the transverse relationship now as i mentioned the patient has a posterior cross bite bilaterally therefore it also qualifies in group 3 now fourth is the class or the sagittal relation so as i mentioned the patient has a class 2 relation therefore it also qualifies in group 4 Now as for the group 5 the bite depth is not affected but it is normal but we also know now since we have seen there is a problem in both the transverse as well as the sagittal plane so it classifies in group 6 and we do not need to go further into group 7 8 and 9 for this particular case because the bite depth is normal therefore there are no chances that there might be overlapping between the three planes so you can see how this classification overcame the major weakness of the angle system by including the arch length discrepancy the profile and also any deviation in all the three planes of space i hope you might have understood this classification and that's all